So my plan was the following, that in chapter 8 we go through exercises 4, 5, 6 and 7. And this is all about Cournot model for two uh, firms. Mm -hmm. Then something about price with collusion. And then two Stuckelberg games. Uh, simple. Just to go through the model itself to make sure that you understand that. Will we do this? Do you want me? Yeah. I can go very quickly. Yeah? Okay. Chapter 8. Problem uh, number 4. We have two firms. Demand function is 26 minus 2q, um, where q is equal to q1 and q2. Huh? Marginal costs are constant and are equal for both firms and equal to 2. Uh, in subproblem A, I have to solve for Cournot uh, reaction functions for each firm. Mm -hmm. So, um, simply, who will help me if I say firm 1? What will be marginal revenue of firm 1? Yeah, okay, so you have me 26 minus 4q what? Mm -hmm. And it is equal to 2, right? From here we derive reaction function that my q1 is equal to 6 minus half of q2, right? And by symmetry, q2 is equal to 6 minus 1 half q1. On your exam, quite often you are asked to draw reaction functions. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. See, um, this is always a dependence between Q1 and Q2. So write, we write here Q1 and here we write Q2. Mm -hmm. Now we want to plot two equations. So I see, what if Q2 is equal to 0? This is 0, see? Mm -hmm. Then if Q2 is equal to 0, then Q1 is equal to 6. I put 6 here. So this will be my first point. Mm -hmm. What if Q1 is equal to, to 0? Yeah? Then Q2 is equal to 12, right? So this is, say, 6, and this is 12. So this is my second point. Connect the two. And this is reaction function of firm 1. Mm -hmm. If I do just the same for the second one, say, what if Q2 is equal to 0, then Q1 is equal to 12? This is 12. If Q1 is equal to 0, Q2 is equal to 6. This is here. Mm -hmm. We connect these two. And this is firm 2 reaction curve. And what is this? Right. This is Nash equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And we find that by uh, inserting this one to this one. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we will get Q1 equal to Q2, we equal 4. Yeah? With this uh, output price is equal to 10. And profits for both P1 is equal to by 2 is equal to 32. Right? Mm -hmm. Then exercise 5. Everything just the same, solve for output and price with collusion. Mm -hmm. uh, in this game theory exercise, we talked about price with collusion. So what should be the reason in here? Hmm? What is the price with collusion? Two oligopolists, they understand that because of their competition, they they reduce the output a little bit too much. If market structure uh, was monopolistic, the profit, total profit, would be higher. So they agree to act as a monopolist mm -hmm. and then to split the profit. 
if we consider this market structure as a, mon as a monopolistic one, instead of uh, splitting this Q in the beginning, yeah, we treat it as one output, as a monopolist. So marginal revenue of a monopolist will be what? Minus, right, 4Q. And equal to marginal costs, equal to 2. So from here, I get the output equal to 4.5. Mm -hmm. um, no, right. The okay. The large one, yeah, total will be nine. Mm -hmm. So Q one equal to Q two will be equal to four point five. Mm -hmm. Right? Why not? Oh yeah. Something is wrong. Twenty-four uh, is equal to four Q. Yeah, Q is equal to six. Q one equal to Q two is equal to three. Ma so the price is equal to twenty-six minus uh, minus twelve, and is equal to fourteen. Right? Oh yeah, I just looked at the wrong place. So in this case, um, if we Calculate the profit, 1 equal to profit of the second one, it will be 3 by 14 minus 2 and is equal to 36. So now we see that by collusion, they too increase the profit. Mm -hmm. They reduce the output from 4 to 3, but by that, um, they sustain higher price and get higher profit. And this is the collusion. But now we understand that each of them has an incentive to deviate. If one of them say, OK, I understand that if I increase this from 3 to something, I can earn larger profit. Mm -hmm. um. For example, how can we find this is a question. Assume that the firms initially split the collusive output evenly. Show that firm A has an incentive to increase output by one unit. Thus, firm B also has an incentive to increase the output. So what we can do is just to say, OK, well, I can calculate what if one of the Qs is equal to 4, what will be the profit? But we can do the following. To, to see whether there is an incentive to one of the companies, we can look at its residual demand function. Mm -hmm. So say this is part B. I'm firm 1, and we decided that we reduce the output to 3. Mm -hmm. And by this, we have like high profit. I think to myself, OK, what if, OK, well, my residual demand function will be 26 minus 2Q2. This is the production of second guy. And this is my production, Q1. I know that he produces 3, because we agreed upon 3. Mm -hmm. So this will be p equal to 20 minus 2q1. Right? This is my residual demand function. So I know that this is what is left for me. Now I work um, to maximize my profit. So I put my marginal revenue equal to 20 minus 4 Q1 and equal to my marginal cost, equal to 2. So now my Q1 is equal to 4.5. Mm -hmm. uh, so now instead of total Q equal to 6, I have a new one that is 3 plus this 4.5. Mm -hmm. So my total output now in the industry is 7.5. From here I can find new price. So price, because of my cheating, will, will be 11. So from here, I derive my price. It will be 4.5 to 11 minus my average costs. And this is 40.5. So you see that if I know that my opponent will still collude and earn this or produce this 3, if I defect and increase my output in order to maximize my profit in this period, I can produce or I maximize my profit if I produce 4.5. Because of this, 
the, the price goes from 14 to 11. But to this period, I earn higher profit than this 36. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine that if we calculate the profit of second guy, it will be much lower. Mm -hmm. So he will be definitely angry. Mm -hmm. So this is how the whole collusion story works, actually. Then uh, problem number six. Consider a market with two identical firms. So everything just the same. But now we assume that this market has a Stuckelberg leader, firm A. Mm -hmm. But in the next exercise, in exercise seven, we have the same, but it is assumed that uh, first firm has lower costs. Mm -hmm. And we have again Stuckelberg model. I think it's more interesting. So we go immediately to exercise seven. Mm -hmm. Eight point seven. So market demand is again the same. Twenty six minus two Q. Mm, but marginal cost of firm one is two. Marginal cost of firm two is two point five. Mm -hmm. And it is said that because of this uh, cost advantage, uh, first company can move first and decide its capacity. Mm -hmm. And then only after that, uh, the second company will have some decisions. And now look about that. This is a sequential game, mm -hmm. sort of a game tree. Uh, the first decision node is firm one, second decision node is firm two. And now we start to solve the game backwards. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we think, OK, the second firm, uh, when it decides upon capacity, it looks on the decision by the first firm. Yeah? So it is actually responding to something that happened in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's why we start with best response functions, mm -hmm. uh, best response function of the second firm, because this one is in the end of the game tree. Mm -hmm. Uh, so firm two, best response function. You help me. Hmm? Marginal revenue of second firm is minus two, two right, and is equal to two point five. From here, I can derive uh, best response function of second firm. And this will be 23.5 over 4 minus 1 half of Q1, mm -hmm. right? And now again, come back to the game tree. Mm -hmm. The first firm moves first. And now think of it. It does not best response on anything. It just makes decisions. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we don't have to find any best response function here in this case. But this first guy, he's smart, and he understands that the second firm will have this best response function. Mm -hmm. And this is this one. So instead of finding or responding to anything, the firm one simply takes this function and puts it into his demand function straight away, mm -hmm. without any responding. So residual demand f uh, function for firm 1 will be 26 minus 2q1 mm -hmm. and minus 2 multiplied by this story. Mm -hmm. 23.5 to 4 minus 1 over 2q1. Mm -hmm. If we open the brackets, um, we get here something like where it is okay let me just solve it 6 minus 2 q1 minus 23.5 to 2 plus q1 right mm -hmm. this is, so this will be I'm doing a mistake somewhere, I think. Do 
Does anybody calculate this? No? 14, 2, 5, and minus Q1, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So then, um, as I am acting now as a monopolist, I have just my demand. I apply straight away my marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, yeah? rule, to maximize profit without any response. So then marginal revenue first firm will be 14.25 minus 2Q1 and is equal to 2. Mm -hmm. From here we derive Q1. Um, I got 6.125. Is it right? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Then from here I can find production of the second firm. Yeah. From here I take this 6.125, put it here, mm -hmm. and find Q2. Q2 is equal to 2.8125. Now I have total production, this big Q. From here I can find my price. And price is equal to 8.125 and I find profits profit one and profit two. Yeah? So this is how the logic of Stackelberg game works. You imagine a tree mm -hmm, and start always to solve the tree backwards. I understand that my second player, like this is firm one, it can has many, many, many different, like infinite amount on different strategies. I can produce Q equal to one, Q equal to two, and so on and so forth. On each of these strategies, I, gave, had, I have my second player, mm -hmm, who should as well decide upon price, or upon quantity. Mm -hmm. And here somewhere I have my, my payoffs. So I start from here. This guy will always try to respond on something that he observes here. Mm -hmm. That's why here on first stage, find best response function. Mm -hmm. This one, he just makes decision. He does not respond on anything here. Mm -hmm. That's why he just maximizes the profit. So in Stackelberg game, I always find only one best response function, and then in insert just with the demand function, and that's it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, there is an exercise number 10. It's fairly simple, but it looks quite weird. That's why I decided to go through that as well. But it's very short. So this is 8.10. The du two duopolists face the following industry demand curve. So price is equal to 1000 divided by Q. Mm -hmm. So now we suddenly see that uh, demand curve can, can be nonlinear. Mm -hmm. Marginal costs are equal to average costs, and it is equal to 20 for both of them. So what is the Bertrand equilibrium output for each firm. So who can help me? Now we play Bertrand game. So instead of playing over capacity, now we play over prices. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So price is always equal to marginal cost. So if you face this problem of Bertrand game you with, uh, with identical products, this is very important. Yeah. You don't have to explain anything. Don't derive anything. Just go through it ahead. Say that price is equal to marginal cost. That's it. And then the logic is the following, is that if we have some price advantage or cost advantage of one of the firms, it captures the whole market. That's it. This is the whole model. So here I say that 1000 over Q is equal to 20. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It means that Q is equal to 50. So don't be afraid if you f uh, face th something that does not look exactly how you did before. Mm -hmm. Try to apply the tool that is available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so before being scared, try to do what you can do. And in almost all the cases on exams, it's wo it works. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I have got several questions uh, about consumer surplus story. Mm -hmm. 
That's why we go back to chapter 3. And this is a simple exercise number 7. We start from simple stuff and then go to something more complicated. we have price is equal to 53 minus Q mm -hmm. average cost equal to marginal cost and is equal to 5 the exercise is the following that first of all we assume that there is a monopolistic market monopolistic market structure mm -hmm. so we find profit we find price out, uh, output and then find consumer surplus mm -hmm. the next step we assume what if there is one more firm on the market, the holistic market. And then we do everything the same. Um, so first thing, if there is a mon monopoly market, um, we maximize profit. Marginal revenue is equal to 53 minus 2Q is equal to 5, right? Q is equal to 24. Mm -hmm. Then the price is equal to 53 minus 24 is equal to 29, right? And we calculate profit. Profit here is this 29 minus 5, 24 to 24. Mm -hmm. And this is 576, right? Simple. Uh, now we will draw a small graph. This is Q, this is P. Mm -hmm. This is 53, and um, this is 53. This is the industry demand curve, right? Mm -hmm. When I apply my twice steep rule on a monopolistic market, I get marginal revenue curve that goes like exactly half of that. Okay, it's not quite linear. Mm -hmm. um, and here, somewhere where it is equal to 5, I have my linear costs. Yeah? I say that marginal costs are equal to marginal revenue. So it is some linear stuff. So this is demand. Say this is price equal to 53 minus Q. This is marginal revenue. And this is marginal cost equal to 5. Mm -hmm. How I find the profit maximizing output? I take this point, right? where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. This is the crossing. I go from here up to the demand curve, and I find the price. Mm -hmm. And here my price is equal to 29. Mm -hmm. On last lecture, we discussed that what is consumer surplus? This is the difference betwe between what the consumers were willing to pay and what they have actually paid. Mm -hmm. So this is this triangular. Right? Mm -hmm. This is what they actually paid. And this is all the amounts that w they were OK to pay. Mm -hmm. So from here, my consumer surplus, in case of monopolistic market, is equal to now we find just the square of this triangular. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is I multiply this part on this and to one half. Yeah? So this is one half to fifty three my um, fifty three minus twenty nine. This part mm -hmm. and multiplied by Q, and Q in my case is equal to twenty four. Mm -hmm multiplied by 24 and this will be equal to 299 right mm -hmm. um, now I make one step further I say okay well no what will be the output if the industry was perfectly competitive 
Okay. Here we don't talk actually about producer surplus. Here we ha talk about profit, profit of monopolist. Yeah? And this is this thing, huh? right? This is 24 multiplied by 24. And this is exactly what we did here. Mm -hmm. This is always a square. This is the difference between the costs that I paid and the price that I have got. This is just profit, right? So pink is the profit. Then I say, OK, what if I have perfect competition on the market? Suddenly, the price competitive is equal to marginal costs. Yeah? So price on the market now is equal to 5. If price is equal to 5, what is the Q? Hmm? Guys, look, look here. Right, Q is equal to 48. Mm -hmm. So instead of having this equilibrium point, now I have my equilibrium here, right? This is where my price intersects with marginal costs. Mm -hmm. This point is 48. This is price 5. Now I find my new consumer surplus. In this new case, it will be, again, the difference between what is actually paid and what was OK to pay. So, And this is all this big thing, this big triangular, right? Because now price is here. New consumer surplus is equal to 53 minus 5. Mm -hmm. This is 48 multiplied by this from 0 to 48, the output. Mm -hmm. This is again 48. And to 1 half, because this is the square of the triangular. Mm -hmm. In this case, the consumer surplus is equal to 1, 1, 5, 2. Mm -hmm. And now look at two market structures. In the first case, with monopoly, that small thing was consumer surplus. This large thing was profit. Mm -hmm. In new case, now we have uh, competition. And this is all consumer surplus. What is the profit of the company? It's zero, right? Because if they produce on marginal costs, it only means that they just co covered the costs. Mm -hmm. So no economic profit. So then the question, uh, this was everything that was, so to say, earned or consumed in competitive market. This is something that we get in uh, or monopolistic market. This is something that we get in competitive market. So the question is, what is this triangular? Right. This is dead weight loss. That is something that is lost in economy because of monopolization of industry. So if you simply uh, take the summation of these two things, profit and consumer surplus on monopolistic market, and subtract it from here, you will get exactly the square of dead weight loss. Mm -hmm. Make sense now? And what is even more important is that these two things, consumer surplus and producer surplus or profit is actually what is social welfare. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in the first case, everything that was relevant to social welfare was this one. Mm -hmm. In competitive case, it was this big triangular. So this is dead weight lost for social welfare. This is something that socially is lost. Mm -hmm. Now we got go for a little bit more complicated story. Um, some of you, many of you, actually asked me to go through some exercises with subsidies. Mm -hmm. and I actually understand where this re request comes from. It comes from your com compulsory assignment. Yeah? Um, at some point, I don't remember quite well here, um, there is a story about regional agency. Mm -hmm. We have before that a game between two companies, two firms. Yeah? And then 
Suddenly, a third player comes. Some of you came to me on the first lecture, and I'm very ashamed because I was not attentive enough. Probably it was you, and that's why I answered a wrong thing to you. Um, the idea is the following. We have a domestic producer, someone there, yeah? And in your case, you have some import capacity. Therefore, your demand is 140 minus 20. This 20 is import. Mm -hmm. And then minus Q. Mm -hmm. It was like that. And you said that this is import. And this is some regional company, regional firm. And then a regional agency comes. Here you think about actually government mm -hmm. that wants to change something on the market. Mm -hmm. And what they do? They invest 100 in order to increase this 20. They say that now import capacity is larger. Mm -hmm. So what they do actually, by this intervention, they change the demand function for regional firm. So now new demand function for companies would be 100 minus Q, yeah? instead of 120. Something has changed. So this is, in a way, it's not a player. This is some interve intervention that uh, tells to market participants, now your demand function will be different. You recalculate everything. But then the question is, OK, if this is some regional agency, governmental authority, what is um, the purpose of intervention? The purpose is to increase social welfare. Yeah, right? So they invest this 100 in order to increase social welfare. So your task here is to see whether social welfare actually increased. How you do this? You look at profits of your domestic firms yeah, and consumer surplus before intervention. Then you change market demand. Mm -hmm. And then you calculate again new equilibrium. You find new profits, new Q, new price, and new consumer surplus. Mm -hmm. And you compare these two things. If this is positive, and if this is larger than investment by this public authority, then it was profitable. It was reasonable to intervene uh, by increasing the social welfare. Make sense? OK. Honestly, I didn't manage to find any exercise with subsidies. But I found an exercise with tariffs. It's almost the same. Yes. This yeah. Cost. Yeah. But then it's not a fixed cost. It's just a cost. It's just the government. Okay. Well, but it's not variable cost as well. It pays once, and it yeah, is not. Yeah. But the fact that they are calling it fixed cost and they say it mm. incurs, it means that w that the firms are actually paying it. But no. Yes. No. They are not. Then the formulation is quite tricky. Not it really. Incurs to wooden. To no. They are mentioning that their particular firm is going to add a new line. Can you give me? Okay, we have 10 minutes. I want to go through one more exercise. <laughs> Suppose monopolistic... Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Suppose regional agency considers investing in a new transmission line that will increase the import capacity from 20 to 40. A new line will give a shift in residual demand function. If agency decides to invest in a new transmission line, it incurs a fixed cost from doing so equal. So, you know, you read, agency decides to invest. This is the agency who invests. It incurs to him. This is 100. Um, so our time is running out. Imagine the following situation. We have price equal to 280 minus 2 QA plus QB. So we have a um, market with two market participants. Yeah? Hmm? It's not a chapter. It's just one exercise that I managed to find on your problem, mm -hmm. just to show how the reason may go. Um, we say that there are two companies. One company is a domestic one. Another one is international company. Mm -hmm. But both have the same marginal costs equal to 40. And they have the, f the same fixed cost, equal to 450. Mm -hmm. And they compete 
over quantities. So here we have a symmetric Cournot model. Mm -hmm. I think there is no need to go through all the calculations. So in the equilibrium, we will get Q1 that is equal to Q2 and equal to 40. Mm -hmm. With this output, we get the price that is equal to 120. And profits of both firms, profit A, OK, yeah, I'm, I'm actually confusing you. Huh? Profit A is equal to profit B is equal to 275. Mm -hmm. So this is the outset. And then it is said, OK, and now government decides to put a tariff on imported goods. Mm -hmm. So what should we do as an as a analyst? How can we treat this? The question is, uh, will this governmental intervention have any positive social welfare effect? Mm -hmm. So you see, the problem is quite similar to what you have done. But here, instead of actually um, changing the demand function, I put a tariff. What would you say? What will change um, here? Right, exactly. So now I say that marginal cost of my domestic firm, of firm A, say, is equal to 40. But marginal cost of another firm is equal to 50. Right? Mm -hmm. From here, I should find a new Cournot Nash equilibrium. I apply just the same thing. I'm, I find best response functions, and so on and so forth. Uh, from here, I will get. Now I have not a symmetric situation. Mm -hmm. QA will be equal of domestic firm 4167. And now import imported quantity will be 3667. Mm -hmm. So you see that uh, due to the fact that government actually increased the cost of production for my uh, rival, I, um, domestic firm can increase its output. Mm -hmm. Because of that, the price changes as well. Now price will be 123.3. So it actually increased. Mm -hmm. Now we can suspect that uh, with social welfare, most likely something has changed. Yeah? Different price, a little bit different quantity. I have to calculate that. And in addition to that, I calculate profits. So profit of first company or domestic company will be 3.21.9 and profit of the second or international company will be 2.238.6. So you see, by governmental intervention, actually the government increased the profit of domestic producer mm -hmm, from here to here, but uh, incurred some losses for an international company. Mm -hmm. Now we have to decide whether this intervention was an OK thing or not OK. Mm -hmm. For this, first of all, we calculate social welfare before and social welfare after. Social welfare without tariffs, without tariff regulation. Uh, you imagine, this is something triangular like that. It's something here. Mm -hmm. I have to calculate some square of some triangular. Mm -hmm. It always will be this thing 280, this first stuff here, the, the point here, and here will be the price. So even without drawing the stuff, I can see that it will be 280 minus price and multiplied by quantity produced. Mm -hmm. And this is 40. And I multiply it by one half because this is a triangular. Mm -hmm. Here I have got my consumer surplus equal to 6,400. So that was consumer surplus before intervention. And then something happens. I have consumer surplus with tariffs. Mm -hmm. I put T here. So here I have 280 minus new price. It, it is 123.3. And I have a bit different total production. This is the sum of these two. And this is 78.34. Mm -hmm. And I multiply it by one half. Um, I have a new consumer surplus, 6137. Mm -hmm. What happened? Consumer surplus 
actually decreased. Because it should be 80, right. Good. <laughs> um, so our first reaction is, OK, well, these tariffs reduced social welfare. It's not OK. But we should not forget that if we talk about social welfare, we talk about everything that happened in the society. We have to take consume, uh, producer surplus into account as well. Mm -hmm. And we know that the profit of my domestic producer has increased. Mm -hmm. So, well, now I say that the difference uh, in consumer surplus was negative. Mm -hmm. It decreased to 263, and it is negative, yeah? So I put minus here. Mm -hmm. But what about the profit of domestic producer? Because this is, again, like, this is the money of our society. Mm -hmm. The profit of, profit, uh, of pro firm one, domestic one, actually increased from 200... Uh, 2750 to this 3000 something so it increased by 271.9 and there is one more element what have we forgotten here hmm? the tariff itself mm -hmm. we earn money on that so this is the income from tariffs this is 10 multiplied by quantity imported by international company. So, and this is to 36.67. Mm -hmm. So this will be 36.67. And now, when I sum up all of that, mm -hmm, it turns out that change in total welfare is actually positive. Mm -hmm. This is 3.75.6. So from here we get to know OK, from tariff regulation, the government managed to improve social welfare. Mm -hmm. The story with subsidies will most likely work in the same way. But if you have a subsidy, most likely will uh, lead to decrease of marginal cost of a domestic producer, right? Mm -hmm. So does it make sense? Is it clear here? OK. Well, now we have just one minute. <laughs>